Here is the dark side of self-improvement that no one talks about. You are trying to become the best version of yourself, which is a good thing, but as soon as you learn about what you should be doing, for example, I should be reading, I should be working out, I should be praying, I should be getting up early, then there's no way back. It creates this mental checklist that if we don't do everything on that list, it could potentially be doing more harm than good. When I was 15, 16 years old, I started reading books, going to the gym, waking up early, trying to build a business and make some first money. Why? Because I wanted to break free from my current situation and build a better future for myself and the people around me. But the truth is that self-improvement alone doesn't satisfy us. Self-improvement is only one part of the journey. So today, I'll uncover the full picture we're going to look at self-improvement from both sides, but especially into the shadows of the pursuit of becoming the best version of yourself with some information that you may have never heard before, since all of these self-help gurus only focus on the positive side of self-improvement. But first of all, don't get me wrong. Of course, there are way more positive benefits to self-improvement compared to the potential negative side. But when looking around, I see no one talking about the potential threats. But before we dive deeper into that, let's start with asking ourselves what is self-improvement and why should we even start improving ourselves in the first place? When looking back to my journey so far, the urge of self-improvement in different aspects of life came from being in an uncomfortable situation. And this probably counts for you as well. You are unhappy or not satisfied enough with how things are going right now. So you decide to act upon that feeling and try to make a change which is not a bad thing at all. It's human nature. It's how God has created us, right? Purpose driven. It always starts with a trigger. Back in the days when people were hungry, they had to hunt for their food. Or when they were cold, they need to search for wood and create a little fire to keep themselves warm. The human brain reacts to these triggers because if we don't, we wouldn't survive. Sounds logical, right? But nowadays, it's not necessarily about surviving anymore. We can just order our foods for everywhere and turn on the heater or put a hoodie on when we're feeling a little bit cold. But the funny thing is that even in today's modern world, our brains are still wired the same way as thousands of years ago. Purpose driven, but only the triggers are just a little bit different. For example, you have no money, so you try to start a business. You're feeling weak, so you go to the gym. You're feeling burned out, so you start meditating. Well, at least that's how I hope you react. Because how you react to a trigger like this will determine where you will be in a few years. Just like building good habits and improving yourself, developing bad habits often starts with the same triggers as well, but a different reaction. For example, most people when feeling stressed choose for short-term pleasure as their reaction. Eating junk food or watching Netflix to feel better. But you are not like that, right? I hope you have already decided to change your life. And changing your life and your current situation doesn't happen overnight. I hope you understand that as well. You've probably already started with taking your first steps, right? Just like I did. Reading books, maybe buying some courses or listening to podcasts, YouTube videos, etc. And you start hearing all of these new things like wake up early, wake up at 4.30, take cold showers, stop going to parties, start meditating. And most of these things are very good. It motivates you, it builds character, it makes you stronger, wiser. But at the same time, these new standards put a lot of pressure on you. Once you start learning about self-improvement, there's no way back. You start feeling guilty if you don't wake up early. You start feeling bad about yourself when you didn't went to the gym. But why? Because before you started with self-improvement, when you never opened up a book or listened to a podcast before, you didn't care at all. You could be playing video games right now or watching TikToks all day, but you can't anymore. And that's your fault. You started this journey. You decided you want to change. You decided to open that book or listen to that podcast and be confronted with reality. So the only option left is making it happen. Because if you don't, it will make you feel miserable. It could even lead to depression in some cases because you know what you have to do. And if you don't do it, you could be doing more harm than good. Like I said in the beginning of this video. And let me tell you this, one of the hardest things I had to learn in my younger years is the difference between motion and action. And let me explain, because this might genuinely be one of the greatest advices I've ever got. Like I said, I really wanted to improve at a young age. So I started reading books, podcasts, YouTube videos, etc., etc. And then this guy came up to me because he saw what I was doing and he said to me, let me give you one example 
And then I want to ask you a question. I said, all right, man, go ahead. And he started, he said, let's pretend that there is a man who wants to lose weight and build some muscles. And because of that, he started writing a plan for himself, uh, bought three books, uh, read a lot of articles on the internet, watching YouTube videos about how to do fitness in the best way. And he even bought some healthy food to fill his, uh, his fridge. He said, what do you think about this man? I was like, sounds good. But he said, no. After all of the things I just mentioned, four, five, six weeks of preparation went by. And what did he actually achieve? He is still fat and he didn't lose any weight. No one cares about that he is reading a book about health or learning how to exercise on YouTube. To become healthy and lose weight, the only thing that he should be doing is go to the gym immediately. <sighs> he was right. And that's the difference between motion and action. Action is something that moves you forward. Motion is just moving around. And that's where a lot of people get stuck. There is a difference between knowing and understanding. A difference between intention and action. A difference between writing goals and execution. And don't get me wrong, everything starts with learning, having good intentions and writing down your goals. But if you stay on that side of the spectrum, nothing will happen. Because what happens after you write down your goals? Nothing. And what happens after you read that book? Absolutely nothing. Real improvement starts when you take that knowledge, when you take that intention and start acting upon it. When you start putting it into practice, that's where true learning happens. You can read hundreds of books, watch thousands of YouTube videos, for example, on how to become the best salesman. But as soon as you have your first sales meeting, you will see that you are nowhere yet. Only after thousands of sales calls with different persons and making hundreds of mistakes along the way, that's when you become a professional. And this counts for everything in life. So one of the biggest dark sides of self-improvement could be that you get stuck in this learning curve of getting knowledge without applying it, which will keep you at the same spot as where you are right now. And that's not what we want, right? The best thing that you can do is define your goal, make a realistic plan and immediately start executing it. Don't rush the process and try to improve 1% every single day, but do it through action not through motion. A few small steps a day may not sound like that much, but if you count them up over a period of months or even years, you make insane progress. And another last aspect that is very crucial to growth is self-acceptance. Accepting where you are right now, only comparing yourself to who you were yesterday. Accepting every small and every big win. Learning from your losses and enjoying the now. Having goals is very good, but don't let these goals affect how you feel. Essentially, all we have is the now, the present, since both of the future and the past only exists in our minds, in the now. Let that sink in for a second and I'll see you in the next video.